What is going on friends and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. Today we are checking out the first real snapshot of the 1.18 Caves and Cliffs Part 2 update and this is 21W37A. So this is basically all the changes that were in the experimental snapshots as far as the world generation goes. They've kind of cleared up a lot of the microbiome issues and some of the other things that they were having earlier on and they actually made a bunch of different changes to the game as well. So we're going to go ahead and recap all the changes made throughout the experimental snapshots and in this snapshot as well. So let's get right into today's video. So this new update is actually including 8 new biomes and it's basically breakdowns of different variations of these same areas. So we of course have the dripstone and lush caves which are coming to uh, Minecraft 1.18. And then we also have the Grove Biome, Lofty Peaks Biome, Snow-Capped Peaks Biome, Meadows, Snowy Slopes Biome, and Snowy, Stony Peaks Biome. So we can see here on the left I actually have the Meadows Biome, and then on the right I have the Snow-Capped Peaks Biome. And this is just a very small uh, actual Snow-Capped Peaks Biome, and it's only going to be found, of course, at the peaks of huge mountains. So with the new mountains and the new biomes, of course, there are some new world generation features as well, specifically towards the actual world limits. So the build limits now go up to Y320 and Y-64, a 64 block change both down and up, making 128 more blocks that we can now build and explore with. This is a huge update to Minecraft and is obviously going to change some of the performance features of the game, but hopefully they get that all worked out before the final update releases. I can already tell in this snapshot they have actually improved a little bit of the performance so far. It was definitely a lot smoother than some of the experimental snapshots, so I'm glad to see some progress made on that front. So I mentioned all eight of the biomes that they're including, but let's actually talk about what each biome is. So the Grove biome is a snowy terrain with big spruce trees and powdered snow traps, and you might want to wear leather boots. This is directly what it says in the actual patch notes of the 21W37A snapshot. So these are going to be at higher terrains uh, beneath mountain peaks or on hilltops, and they're going to spawn wolves, rabbits, and foxes. So next up is the meadow biome, uh, which of course is just the same meadow that we've already known. It's a large grassy and flowery biome uh, that's going to it's going to grow on top of the plateaus. So as we saw before, it was on a huge mountain next to some snow-capped peaks, and uh, it's going to be a just very nice place uh, filled with flowers and grass. So of course the other peaks that we have are the snow-capped peaks, the snowy slopes, and stony peaks. So the snow-capped peaks are going to be smooth mountain peaks with ice and snow, and I think that's a really cool feature to have the ice and everything up there. They also hinted at a yeti spawning at the top, but I think that was more just an actual joke than any actual hint towards what's going to be in a future update. These snowy slopes are going to be super snowy uh, terrain that can hide powdered snow traps as well. So leather boots might actually be essential when we're going into any of these areas so that you don't freeze and fall into these. Either that or at least a bucket so you can pick up the powdered snow and get rid of it. Next up we have the stony peaks. The stony peaks are just basically peaks filled with complete stone and can also contain calcite as well. So calcite should be a bit easier to get now that it's not going to be only around amethyst. So those are the five biomes that we're going to find above ground. Now let's talk about the two new biomes that we're going to find underneath the ground. So the dripstone caves biome, uh, which is going to contain obviously all the dripstone you're no longer just going to find regular dripstone around it's going to be only in these biomes now they can spawn huge stalactites and stalactites and there's going to be huge columns as well with the dripstone blocks this biome is also going to contain more copper than anywhere else in the world so if you're in need of a lot of copper it's going to be super useful to go and find one of these biomes the next underground biome that we have is the Lush Caves biome. So this is going to be covered in moss, it's also going to have spore blossoms and all the azalea blocks. Uh, it's also going to have clay and it's going to spawn drip leaf as well. So we will now have a way to get drip leaf other than from the wandering trader, which I think is great and of course we already knew this going in and we just had to wait around for that biome to be added so we could actually get easy access to drip leaf. This is also where we're, gonna, where we're gonna be able to find cave vines and also glowberries. Glowberries are actually extremely interesting to me because of the new mob spawning mechanic where monsters only spawn at light level 0 instead of light level 7 like in 1.17 and before. 
This is a huge change, meaning that it has to be completely dark before a mob spawns, so in the lush caves that are filled with glowberries, you actually shouldn't find any mobs. This adds a huge change to the enchantment table as well, because in this snapshot they have also made it so that the enchantment table emits a low light level. So that means that around your enchantment table, mobs shouldn't be able to spawn and you won't have to include a different type of light source. This is obviously a very minor change, but it's very cool. It makes sense that the magical item that's in the game actually emits some sort of light level. The other change that they've included for blocks in the game happens to be shears and its use on cave vines, twisting vines, weeping vines, and kelp. So this is actually a very interesting change. By using shears on the tip of any of these items, they actually won't be able to grow anymore, which I think is very interesting and can actually be extremely useful if you're trying to keep your kelp at certain levels or your vines at certain levels. It'll actually stay there and won't grow, and this is extremely cool because I don't really know the exact uses you can have for this yet, but it's definitely a very interesting feature and should be very fun to explore in this update. Now let's start talking about mining in the new update. There are some huge changes coming to how we actually mine, and it's definitely going to be very interesting to explore all the possibilities for new mining techniques. So Deep Slate is now of course going to spawn below Y0, and you're no longer going to find blobs like we currently do at the best diamond levels. Of course, the best diamond levels are changing as well, and the deeper that you go into the world, all the way down to Y-64, the more and more diamonds you're going to find. So it might be worth it early game to stay above the deep slate levels, find some diamonds and get prepared, and then go down into the deep slate levels where you're going to be able to find more diamonds, but of course it's going to take you longer to mine because deep slate is tougher. Of course, with these new levels, ore generation as a whole is changing. So uh, there is no longer a single Y level that is best for all ores. You really need to make trade-offs in order to find more iron or more copper or more gold. Whatever you're looking for, it's going to generate very differently now. So iron ore generates below Y72, but it has a strong bias towards Y16. Iron, all, iron ore can also generate above 112, so you're going to find it in the mountains, and the higher up in mountains you are, you're going to find more iron. Copper ore also generates between Y0 and Y96, so if you go into the negative Y levels, you're not going to find any copper at all but you're going to find a lot of copper if you mine towards Y48. And as we said before, copper ore is going to generate a lot in dripstone cave biomes, so if you're looking for copper, you're going to want to go towards Y50 and also the dripstone caves. Definitely a very interesting change to the game. Lapis Lazuli also will generate below Y64, but have a strong bias towards Y0. What's interesting with Lapis, however, is this is when air starts to become a different problem. So below Y-32 and above Y-32, Lapis will not spawn at all if there is any air exposure. So if it's going to be exposed to any sort of air, it won't spawn. But if it's completely surrounded by stone or any other block, it will spawn. Coal is going to generate above Y-0, you're not going to find it anywhere in the negative Y levels, but it's going to have a strong bias towards Y-96 and above. So the higher up you are, you're going to find more coal. Coal also has reduced air exposure, so you're more likely to find it buried or underwater rather than exposed to air. Gold is going to generate below Y32 and have a strong bias towards Y-16, and this is the first thing where we've seen it's actually going to be better if you go into the negative Y levels. Of course, Badland biomes are still the best place to go for gold, you're going to find way more there than anywhere else in your world. Redstone ore is going to generate below Y16 and redstone generation gradually increases as you go below Y32 and further down. And this is very similar with diamonds. Diamonds generate below Y16, with more diamonds the lower you go. Diamonds have reduced air exposure as well, similar to lapis and coal, so you'll find more diamonds buried or underwater than exposed to air. These are some huge changes to mining, and it's definitely going to be very interesting to see how people go about mining and finding all these resources in the future update. Personally, I love being able to go to diamond level and find absolutely everything else I need, such as redstone, iron, copper, coal, everything. Of course, this is going to be very different in this update. 
it's gonna change a lot of how we go about finding all these resources and I'm definitely excited to try and figure out some new mining methods as well. We won't get into all the technical changes in this update today, but there's definitely a lot there as well. A lot of bug fixes and small things changed to some of the technical things in the game. But this is the first real snapshot we're getting of the 1.18 update, which means we should get some more of the new features coming soon, such as the Deep Dark and the Warden, which I'm really excited to see and to test out, especially to see how exactly they go about uh, with the damage and the health of the Warden, and also what the actual loot in the chest will be as well. That is pretty much all that we have for you guys in this video though. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like down below. If you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button and stick around and see all the rest of the Minecraft updates and all the rest of the content we have as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.